What up, Shredder? Growing up, snowboarding was the antithesis of organized sports, the stomping ground of skaters, rockers, and goths, and the scorn and derision of the jocks and the preps. Today, I don't know if you've been up to Copper Mountain, Colorado, but it's a training ground. And by that I mean, it feels like you're at a youth little league match where the coaches and parents are taking things all too seriously. And if you get in their way, prepare to feel belittled. Some of my best shredding friends are intimidated to be up there because the 12 year old girl and her 41 year old personal coach will metaphorically spit in your face if you get in the way of her landing her next switch backside 180. Those of us that started snowboarding in the 80s and 90s before snowboarding was even an Olympic sport mainly did so because of skate and music culture. Snowboarding was created for the rebels, the misfits, the outsiders. It was supposed to be punk rock. Snowboarding is supposed to be offensive. And now it's basically the same as Little League. So is this bad for snowboarding or is it bringing some much needed attention to the sport and bringing new people in? Let's get into it. Snowboarding is one of the best things in life because it's about creativity, self-expression, and mastery. It's not just about existing hierarchies or adhering to the status quo or fitting in. Some of the OGs of snowboarding have gone as far as boycotting the Olympics because they didn't believe in how it was run. And some have participated, but in their own way. An eternal bow to Heike Sorsa. Terrier and Heike knew what it means to preserve culture. But sometimes, fighting against the establishment is just as bad as being a part of it, two sides of one coin. Sometimes, a rebel is just as dependent on the status quo as a conformist. And what we really need is not to rebel, but to learn to live by our own code, to serve our own life. When I was younger, I thought any kind of formal training in snowboarding was sacrilegious. To quote the Disney movie Brink, I was a soul shredder. Oh, the irony. During a special trip with my friends, I realized that it all meant nothing. That snowboarding was just sliding down the hill on a piece of wood and spinning around in circles. And all the judgment I had towards contest kids was actually misguided. And that I was no better than those who just trained all day, every day. Just like them, I took myself much too seriously. And I realized it's okay to be a soul shredder and it's okay to train every once in a while. In fact, I realized it makes the soul shredding even better. And so I started to compete and I ended up winning a national championship less than two years later. Oakley flew me out to Mount Hood to shoot photos and my snowboarding life got so much more epic than it had been just by adding a little discipline, by practicing my art. And the truth is that even our favorite pros, who we like to believe that it all comes effortlessly to, they train a lot. The more disciplined I got, the more free I felt. So I don't think that training is inherently bad. Just like your favorite badass rock star musician still has to run scales and practice every day for years on end, but this is what enables them to live a life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. For you, discipline will set you free. Practice, technique, and skill is the tool in the toolbox for self-expression. And it happens behind the scenes, in dressing rooms, in yoga studios, in the gym, on days off, in backyards, on the trampoline, and at the mountain every single day. Sometimes you might not realize just how many hours went in to getting good and just how good you could be if you put in the same amount of reps. And one from a champion and one from not being a champion. But this can feel lame if you come from snowboard and skate culture. Because snowboarding is supposed to be counterculture. The key here, I believe, is finding a healthy middle ground. Sliding down the mountain on a piece of wood is supposed to make us feel like a kid again. And that's available to everyone, regardless of where you come from or what you look like. That was the, always the point of snowboarding. It brings us together. Snowboarding is for everyone. It's about pushing limits and pushing yourself, not about what you look like, how much money you have, how old you are, or where you come from. It's about getting rad and finding your edge and breaking it. And the community that's formed through living in this place of intensity with your friends. Status quo, conformity, and establishment thinking are the exact opposite. We may as well go to football camp, or even worse, become skiers. I think the problem in the industry though comes when people think that somehow being good at snowboarding makes you better than someone else, that makes you superior and it becomes exclusionary. Snowboarding is not supposed to be about telling people what not to do. It's about 
anyone being allowed to do whatever they want. Pushing the boundaries of culture and behavior, living outside the Overton window. If we wanted to be average, if we wanted to all be the same, we would go work in the 9 to 5 and play golf on the weekends. But snowboarding isn't about climbing a ladder. It's not a place with a hierarchy where you only get to play if you have a personal coach, or you compete, or you can do the latest twirl or pose on a rail that's popular that day. Sometimes snowboarders forget that the rest of society does not care if you can twirl around two times or three times in the air. It's all the same to them. You're literally just spinning around like a ballerina. Or as Todd Richards says, you're holding a pose down a rail. Society doesn't care which part of your board you pressed on that rail or what the latest fad trick is, but they do care if you're a good person, if you care about your fellow man, and if you're able to have fun. Snowboarding is so you can forget about your troubles and feel alive. And if you want to have the most fun possible, sprinkle in a little discipline so you have the technical skills to surf the mountain like you own it. Just like that guitarist who still shreds practice skills, don't be afraid to drill your tricks so when you roll up on that cliff drop or new park feature, you can throw down with the best of them. Compete against yourself every day to become the best version of yourself. Dance at the edge of your limits. Live on the edge, whatever that means for you. It could mean becoming the next Sean White and developing an absolute obsession with being the greatest. Or it could mean becoming a rad dad or mom who shreds powder on the weekends. The good thing is, snowboarding has something for all of us. And we need the contest king, we need the park rat, the weekend warrior, the powder hound, and the complete newbie breaking all the rules because they don't know any better. It's all there for the taking. What you decide to do with it is up to you. But just remember, be kind to your fellow shredder. We're all humans at the end of the day. And if you want to learn how to practice like the pros, and you want a little more discipline to set you free, so as the Beatles said, you can learn the rules and break them, then check out the very first video in Shred School. We'll show you how to create your practice routine without losing your punk rock and how to use discipline to set you free, not turn you into a basketball player. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of training and snowboarding and the current culture of the sport? Are we headed in the right direction or losing our way? Is snowboarding still punk rock or basically like every other sport? I'm open to all viewpoints. Let's hear them in the comments. That's all for today. Peace out, Shredder.